Warning, the following episode contains movie spoilers. If you plan to see the movie we are speaking of in today's episode, we recommend you wait until later to listen to it. That gets my go- Hey kids, this is That Gets My Goat. I'm Big Anklevich. Expecto Patrona. You're a wizard, Harry. Uh, uh, c- clearly, fame isn't everything. Are you still quoting lines? I am, and, and, and just a second, let me do a line here. The Harry Potter series has come and gone. Yeah, it was like you blinked and you missed it, huh? Uh, pretty much 10 years of Harry Potter movies we had, and you and I both saw Harry Potter. I call it Harry Potter 8. No one else does. They call it 7.2, don't uh, they? I guess that's the politically correct name for it. but It's an update of a uh, program, it turns out. It's not actually a film. <laughs> the uh, Deathly Hallows Part 2, I think is what they call it, mm-hmm. which I guess is fine. Uh, does it make it less confusing or more confusing than if they'd given it another name? It's probably a little less confusing because people aren't going to go out there and go, where's this book called Harry Potter and the Wand of Doom? I can't find it. What was that? The Elder Wand. That's what it was called. Harry Potter and the Elder Wand. Where is it? Harry Potter and Voldemort's. I told you never to say that name. <laughs> so you and I both saw it. Uh, uh-huh. I, I went on opening night. I went um, on the day after opening night. So opening day? No. Okay. It opened on Friday. Die? 12.01 Friday. I went on Saturday. Okay. that's. Uh, <laughs> I, I think I probably would have forced you to go on Thursday night I had really you been around. I, I really was kind of upset that I couldn't. Because I wanted to go on opening night. We went opening night last time. Right, and it was a spectacle. It was really neat. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Now, I, I came directly from work, so I missed a lot of the, you know, oh, look at that guy. He's dressed as this. Or, oh, look, that chick is super hot. Or, oh, look, a dwarf. And so that's why I really wanted to do it. And my niece, uh, I asked her, since you weren't around, mm-hmm. uh, if she wanted to go to the midnight show. And she'd never done that before. And uh, I said, you know, there'll probably be people dressed up and all that. The problem is you have to stay up late. And she said, okay, I'll, I'll do it. And she was so psyched and excited. And uh, it was much more fun seeing the people dressed up and all that through her eyes. And she's like, uh-huh. oh, that, that girl's dressed as Dobby. And if it had been you there, I mean, we'd be like, oh, I don't think that girl has any underwear on. And so, you know, we would have noticed different things. <laughs> um, yeah, my kids were that way too. I mean, they were into the, I mean, there wasn't that much spectacle left. Obviously, on Saturday afternoon, as there would have been midnight on uh, Thursday. But they were really into it. They had a couple tables outside where they were selling uh, T-shirts of Harry Potter T-shirts that you could get. And they had, you know, Order of the Phoenix or Who Shot Dumbledore or I don't know, Han Shot First. Uh, They they had all sorts of T-shirts. No, they just had the Harry Potter T-shirts and stuff there that you could buy in little stickers and things like that at one table then another table they had set up where you could buy like a wand that looked like the harry potter wands and they had somebody that had a sorting hat that actually had like a motor inside of it so the mouth moved and stuff and they had people sit down and put the sorting hat on their head and some other stuff like that and this was the next day and you know my kids were all like oh can i go look at the shirts yeah sure one of the girls at our screening had a sorting thong yeah and she let everybody put it on. You put it on, didn't you? I tried to put it on. Let's just go there. <clears throat> <laughs> was it a sorting sort? <laughs> it was well, a sorting song. Was it a sorting thong or a sorting flip flop? Oh, see what he did there, folks. Ah, he shined a bright light on my loneliness. It's very, very late at night when we're recording this. Um, Harry Potter actually just came out this weekend, mm-hmm. but. I, you know, I don't have a tremendous amount to say. Yeah. I was surprised on Green Lantern that we were able to fill that much time. Uh-huh. I mean, I, I think we recorded well over an hour. I don't have all that much to say. I, well, did you like it? Yeah. Yeah? Was it what you were hoping for in the final installment of this series that's been going on for 10 years with eight parts? Yes and no. 
Now, obviously, they're based very faithfully on these books mm-hmm. that we've read and loved. And so there's not a tremendous amount of room for surprise. Right. And the surprise in the past films, and this one as well, has been what do they keep from the book? What do they drop from the book? What do they reinterpret? What do they choose to focus on? Mm -hmm. And that's been something that has both vexed and impressed me in the earlier movies. Sometimes there are things that I think are important that aren't mentioned or aren't even touched upon or glossed over, like in the case of The Half-Blood Prince. Yeah, who cares who The Half-Blood Prince was? That's the title of the movie, but eh. And then, you know, things that they invent, like the diner in, I think, the same movie, Half-Blood Prince, where I'm just like, wow, that's that's odd. Why why would they choose to do this instead of the Dursleys? And, and so in this one, you know, I didn't notice a lot of, what do you call it, divergence from the book. Mm-hmm. Um, it seemed really faithful and uh, straightforward. And, and I think because of that, I don't have a lot, a to, lot say. to say. Like though The seventh movie it just amazed me where they went with it and what they chose to cover and what they chose to leave out and the animated sequence and the crazy ass fantasy naked evil thing (laughs) coming out of the locket sequence and stuff that had i adapted that book i wouldn't have done Mm -hmm. or wouldn't have thought to do because in this case you know i I thought it was way better than whatever i would have done Mm mm-hmm and in this movie, I, you know, there wasn't a lot of stuff like that where it's just like, wow, where did that come from? It's just like, okay. The, 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 the Snape flashback was like 15 minutes long, and that was cool. That surprised me because mm-hmm. I figured they'd sort of gloss over that. But, you know, maybe it wasn't 15 minutes. Maybe it was only three and a half, and I'm remembering it. I don't like, think it was long. quite as long as that. But, yeah, the, I think that the spot where they explained why he killed Dumbledore was a little hard to follow if you were not somebody who understood that already i think you could have missed that uh otherwise i thought it was really good you know you you talked about before when we talked about harry potter and you know the fact that they split the last book into two and you said you know good on you um because it'll give them the chance hey people love the owl let them spend you know a little extra time on the fact that the owl is dead or whatever and this movie was the one where you know all the people get killed in the big end battle and et cetera, and it was really nice for them to be able to do that. It was a really you know there was a lot of really touching scenes in there that they worked in there because of that. They took the time for this and for that and for you know the the various uh, folks that went down in the uh, the final battle. I have to admit, I was surprised that they never did cut anything. I kept thinking, oh, they're going to do this scene too? Really? Wow. Oh, they're going to do this one? And I remember when it got to the very, very, very end, and I was sitting there going, okay, are they going to do it? Or are they not going to do it? And then they did the even code. the 19 years later scene, mm-hmm. which I thought perhaps they would uh, you know, leave off because I don't know why they would leave it off. There's really not any it's good reason. It's basically her tying up all loose ends so that she would never have somebody say, well, what happens next? You need to write another book. of. It's just like, okay, this is, this is where it happens to everybody. Bye. Mm-hmm. And she can just sit back and spend her billions. But, but it, 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 I, yeah, I, th- I thought that that was really shrewd, I guess, of her. See, to me, it's hard to separate the movie from the book because they are so faithful. And, you know, anything clever that happens, she probably thought of. I really loved the seventh movie, Mm -hmm. and I didn't love the eighth movie. Really? That's interesting, because I liked the seventh movie, but I think I liked the eighth one better. Oh, well. Myself. Well, just a second ago, you said that they focused on all these people dying. You saw a different movie than I did, because we still don't see Fred die. We still don't see Lupin die or Tonks die. I expected, because they had an extra two hours, that we'd get that. And she didn't do it in the book. He just She walks in and Colin Creevy is dead and Lupin is dead and Tonks is dead and, and Fred is dead. Mm-hmm. And it's just up to you to figure out how that happened. And so I thought, okay, cool. We're going to actually see this. Because like they fixed Sirius Black's death in the fifth movie. So you actually see that he died. And I thought, okay, they'll do that here too. We'll see what happened, you know. But 
they were just dead. So I, I'm not really sure who you were referring to. Was it Snape or who? who? Well, you did see Snape um, and you got s- some good stuff with Snape. Some stuff that, yeah, I don't know. It, it's hard for me to say because I don't remember. It's been a while since I read that last book. So I don't remember what was there and how different some things were and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, you get to see in his the whole flashback bit of Snape. And I remember it being specifically touched by that part when he comes in after Voldemort has killed Harry's mother and he comes in and he grabs her and is, is there crying. That was one of the shirts that you could buy at the uh, table there. They had a shirt and it had a white doe on it and underneath it said, always. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> you know, that part was really touching. The part when Ron comes in and sees that Fred has been killed and uh, the family is there mourning and crying is really... Uh, it's hard to watch that. And there was a, a shot, I don't know if you noticed it or not, but there was a shot where Fred is on the ground screaming as somebody's waving their wand at him. No, I don't remember that. But yeah, there was one shot of that. I don't know if that is him dying or not. I mean, I guess we don't really see him die. But when it comes down to it, do you really want to see them die? Yeah. Characters that you've loved for all this time, or would you? Would, well, would you want Sirius to go through some portal and then have three chapters later somebody say oh no he can't come out he's dead (laughs) well you see his dead body you know he's dead when we're talking about fred or lupin and tonks they're characters that you've grown to love over many many books and to see them murdered is you know it's it's that's a tough thing to sit through so you can understand wanting to avoid that you know that they died in the fight but. I, I again can't disagree more <laughs> okay the stuff with dobby dude i'm so glad we got to see that the dobby death scene was just ridiculously moving and powerful for a character nobody likes I don't know. I, I, I'm making it sound like I don't like the movie. There was one <laughs> thing I didn't like, and it wasn't that. You know, it's, They were being faithful to the book. Mm-hmm. And That's true, because they didn't mention it in the book either. They just had him come in and find the, what had happened during the course of the uh, fight. But, you know, a part that I absolutely loved, probably maybe my favorite part of this movie. I don't know why. Maybe it's just because I noticed it more this time around. And I did notice, too. Helena Bonham Carter's name, I don't know if you noticed this, but as the names flashed up at the end when the credits come up, you get Daniel Radcliffe and, uh, you know, our other two um, main characters. And then the first name after that was uh, Helena Bonham Carter's name before anybody else, which I thought was, I don't know, I guess maybe she's the biggest star that's no, in no, the film now. No, no, it's too alphabetical. Because ah. it used to say for the first couple movies would have the three and then it would say starring John Cleese. And you'd be like, what? He had a line. <laughs> right. But yeah, the, the stuff that she did in this film was so great. First, at the very start, when Hermione has become Bellatrix Lestrange, and she comes out and she looks like Helena Bonham Carter, but she acts so unbelievably different. She's all unsure of herself, and she can't stand looking different like that, and she feels so weird and unsure, and the way she walks is different, and everything about her is different. I just loved that whole bit, and she's trying her best but can't even come close to being all imperious and, and uh, nasty when they go to the bank and uh, and all that stuff. It was such good stuff. And then later when she is actually Bellatrix now and you see the, some of the stuff that she does and how she's all exultant and then Voldemort turns and gives her a reproach of some sort and then she does the cowering thing that she does where she puts her head down and looks at the ground in fear of upsetting him further or whatever and i you know i i think she did that a couple times in the previous films but just didn't uh, jump out as much i guess at me before as it did in this film and the, her character that she created for uh bellatrix is really uh really came across and was really really shined i thought in this film she has so much fun with that character and yeah it gives her room to have fun with it uh you know there, are, there i guess there are a couple of thankless roles in there but that was something that I, I did appreciate about this movie is that almost all of the supporting characters get a moment where they get to do a spell or they get to fight or they get to have a speech or they get to, you know, Cho Chang even had a friggin line. <laughs> and I, Neville got to have a whole speech. Oh, and the Neville stuff the was so and... cool. Uh, yeah, that, that was really neat. The Neville stuff. 
Yeah, there was some some really good moments. Like uh, Professor McGonagall gets to bring those statues to life and stuff. But yeah, just she hasn't had a tremendous amount to do in the last couple of movies. Yeah, it's been several movies since, since basically the school has become troubled. She's had a lot less to be able to do. And yeah, several of the others as well. Flitwick, you got to see Flitwick do a, a fair amount. Yeah, that's really cool. It justifies bringing all these characters back. And I know even, I know a lot of them weren't going to come back, and they did reshoots this year in 2011. You know, pickups, I guess. Yeah. And like Emma Thompson got to come back. And right. I was like gonna that. I was gonna mention her. Emma Thompson had a shot <laughs> <laughs> where she's there doing her thing, uh, which was a, a, always a really fun character too that we haven't seen for a long time. But yeah, all the little things that they got to throw in there. was really good stuff. Oh, by the look on your face, I can tell I've spoken too long. Wait, you should permanently have that look on your face. Yeah, that might save us a lot of trouble, probably. So you think we should break this up? Of course. What else do we do? All right, that's fine. Uh, we will continue in a few days uh, with our conversation about Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part D. D? <laughs> Sorry, I sure? could never quite say that correctly. <laughs> All right, see you later, folks. Good night. Please, sir, that gets my goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. But you're free to steal it. <laughs>